Oh, making a video. Yay. Yeah, it's been a while. Just uh, haven't been too many people to argue with, so I haven't argued with anything. Um, and I've uh, been busy. And I uh, got the new video card installed. Yay. Thank you. Um, and it's uh, working. <laughs> yeah, mostly. Yes, it's working. Um, can't really get it to do anything, like really work. That's this dopey software. I mean, you ought to have a thing where you can just load this temperature thing and what it's, how much it's working, how fast this fan's going. Oh, I just have a little separate thing where you can just load that. But anyway, um, yeah, I haven't been able to see its activity. is It's very inactive. <laughs> you know, I've been trying to make it do something. Uh, demonstrate that it's uh, working hard for me. Um, but so far, I haven't been able to do that. So we'll see when I edit this video what will happen. So, put it to the test. It seems about twice as fast as the other card, but it should be, you know, three gigabytes should be really fast. But it might be my editing software. I can't take advantage of, you know, whatever it's got. Its memory's not accessible to uh, my old editing software. Something like that might be. So I might have to actually upgrade my software then, which will really be a bitch. But anyway, uh, it's, you know, it's all things you have to do in life. Um, I guess I'll mention the Vlogger Dome thing again. Vegetarianism. <laughs> yeah, we're running out of days already. So, yeah, for the next couple of days, uh, if somebody wants to volunteer to defend, you know, torturing and killing animals for food, uh, let's hear it. I mean, uh, let's have the conversation. Let's hear the defense. Um, let's debate the subject. So, post below, I guess, if you're interested. Um, yeah, who wants to? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know if my... I, if you've tried to contact me, you haven't uh, accomplished it. So, I, no one so far has contacted me as far as I know. I haven't checked my email lately. Probably should do that. Um, <laughs> it's just, you know, it's, you know, I've been busy. I uh, still haven't fixed my water heater. So, anyway, um, we'll get to other news, more important news. Yeah, probably more important. Um, yeah, you know, I just, you know, I don't want to use up the what the fuck information, but it doesn't really matter. I'll come up with something for that anyway. Anyway, Mike Bayul is back. Um, you know, he's in Florida, didn't go out, didn't work out too well, blah, blah. He's, he seems to be in the mood to make videos, which is cool. So he's made three, I think. And all very nice. Um, uh, right to die, sort of ish. And he, he found a couple of people to respond to supporting wacky ideas and did a you know, good enough job uh, ripping them assholes and vaginas and such and uh, so it was good. A little snarky but uh, you know I tend to like the snarkiest so, you know, so it's good for me. Uh, Tween Toe Guy also made a video, Living a Lie, talking about uh, the default, you know how we just kind of you know, life is just this thing, you know, I've sort of implied it myself in, in terms of, uh, there's always something to do, you know, there's always, you always feel like it's undone, you, you really don't feel like, oh yeah, well, yeah, I want to die, but, you know, it's going to cat to feed, you got this to do, that to do, these little things, and life sort of catches you like that, you know, you're, uh, I was playing Angry Birds, so I'm wasting time, you know, playing with the, the uh, Android thing, because I really want to see Android videos, but anyway, and, um, you know, it's, 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 it's so simple, it's a very simple game, you know, you just knock stuff down to kill pigs and blah, 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 But anyway, um, very cute, okay, fine, but it's so manipulative, you know, is that once you get into the game pretty deep, then all of a sudden they want you to buy superpowers, because the levels get harder and harder, and it's just such a pain in the ass, and it's no fun, and <clears throat> they don't give you any, like, option like, if your first shot sucks, you know you're done. <laughs> you know, so now you got to waste the other seven shots for no reason. But you know you're not going to, you know, they're tough levels. You're not going to, you're not going to complete them unless every shot's perfect. Um, but anyway, and so they just manipulate you, you know, and for money, which is even more disgusting. But you can see your psychology plays with it. You're just like, yeah, I want to get this through this level. I want to, you know, and you're just addicted, just playing. It's just, and that's what life does to you all over the place just keeps giving you a bunch of unkilled pigs and uh, you want to get the son of a bitch you know before you're done 
So whatever the little ambition is, whatever the little thing is, it just nags at you and says, you got to finish this, you got to do this, you got to do that. And it's all bullshit in the end. It's all crap. Um, but you get hooked on it. It's all addictions. It's all just attachments and addictions. Your perception of, of satisfaction with yourself is dependent on the accomplishment of certain tasks. And uh, you feel good because you dug yourself out of some shit. And what's the point in that? So that kind of gets back to... Um, one of the videos uh, Mike did, and also um, uh, Logic Rolls the Dice, he's, you know, he's talking a little bit about religion and God and omnipotence and all that kind of stuff. You know, I'd step over that and just say, yeah, well, that's just a silly notion. I, I mean, the real, <laughs> if, you, if you're omnipotent, why would you make friends who are ignorant little putzes? I mean, God's essentially a pedophile, right? I mean, he's, he makes himself a bunch of totally inferior things to manipulate and play with. I mean, it's kind of disgusting in a way. Um, and why would you find it entertaining at all to watch them step into traps and die in quicksand and all this other crap? And especially for this, for the the only difference being that, um, you know, let's say I would have been converted, would have been, but the Jehovah Witnesses ran out of gas, uh, you know, driving to, you know, doing their Jehovahing, so they didn't get to my house. So God will send me to hell forever because the Jehovah Witness didn't make it to my house? I mean, it's that, that kind of stupid thing. He could convert us anytime he wants to. He just, you know, gets enough <laughs> the right converter, right? There's somebody out there with personality and charisma that could probably convert anyone. Doesn't send him, doesn't send Richard Burton of Jehovah Witnessing. You know, the Richard Burton of Jehovah Witnessing. Um, you know, the Anthony Hopkins, he could probably, he could probably talk me into something. <laughs> you know, he didn't, well, how come God doesn't use those people? Oh, that's right, because he doesn't exist, that's why. Um, yeah, so it is just, you know. Um, but this whole psychology thing, it's just so manipulative and so obvious. Um, who are you fooling? And how the, f how, how could a God possibly be entertained by a soap opera when he already knows the ending of it? He already knows where they're humans are going to make it to the next level or not anyway. So what's the point? What is the point? It's like those extra shots when you're already, you know, when you've blown the first shot, why would you bother doing the seven other shots? If you know humans are going to fail, then when, you know, let it go already. I mean, you know, once you send five or six of them to hell, you ought to already say, oh, this is too messy. I'm not going to do this anymore. This is just too dirty a game to be playing with these poor little dumb animals. But anyway, not just such a stupid idea. I mean, stupid in the sense that first it's just so archaic, it's so old. <laughs> and, you know, that, that alone should give you the creeps. You know, it's this moldy piece of, you know, if you took a 2,000 year old piece of bread, you wouldn't frickin' eat it. Why the hell are you eating a 2,000 year old fairy tale? Come on, people. Wake up. I smell the poo poo. Anyway, but it's all this optimism bias. All this, you know, this is just such psychology. It's just so irritating. So Flora made some videos too, trying out her new technology and whatnot. And so they're kind of spotty videos. Hello, <laughs> did this upload? Kind of videos, but they're very nice. It's, you know, in sunny Australia crappy New Jersey, so. or at least the weather was a little bit better, um, but you know, it's all kinds of little crap I have to, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to get into it, yeah, it's, it's been a rough week, um, so what else can I um, complain about, right, so anyway, I did do some physics videos with my time off, uh, you know, so if you want to see those, um, Oh yeah, Remy. Remy, remember old Remy? Yeah, he, he's uh, took down all his videos, so I guess he's moved on or done something or whatever. So it's kind of weird. Um, miss him and sort of and such. Um, so what else? There's any other news? I mean, not vital news or really important news or anything like that. 
Um, no, physics videos. So I did do some physics videos. It really is on my mind. I mean, this whole unification thing seems so obvious. It just seems obvious that the... It's like life, right? We're alive, but we're colonies of living things. The same forces that affect us are f affecting our atoms. It's just they're affecting them in a different way, in a kinetic way. So photons and all that crap are really what's holding. It's the same kind of force. They're getting f pushed. Put Everything's being pushed. There's no pull. There's just push. And you can sort of think about it like the, the Big Bang sort of works for that purpose in the sense that if you think about anything, any big explosions, they create a, a pressure wave. And what the pressure wave is essentially is, is just an inability for the amount of energy that exists to go as fast as it needs to go to release the pressure. And it's like all these photons got caught up in this pressure wave and that's the universe that we see and everything beyond that is just falls apart because there's no pressure holding it together so we're just in a piece of the universe that is still in the pressure still in the pressure wave and uh, once we the wave passes then all this will dissipate and uh, wander off um, I believe that's probably what's going to happen. But anyway, the more important fact is this idea that it's all made out of one thing. And it's just condensing of that one thing into bigger things. And as soon as you create a bigger thing, it does this blocking of the pressure. And as soon as it blocks pressure, that creates the attractive force because it makes the pressure uneven on all the things around it. And so then they start to move. And they don't move themselves, their acceleration is created inside of them through this pressure. But, oh yeah, it's just too obvious. It's all the school of fish argument, it's just too good an illustration. This is how the universe works. Um, the little bits function under very strict rules, just like fish in a school. And... Um, the form is a, an illusion of what the little bits are doing. It's a byproduct and such. Anyway, I'll do more videos on it, but um, you know, this, 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 these little things I think are just critically important. And the idea of thinking about direct kinetic impacts, you know, two things hitting each other head on, and the fact that in a pure environment, where the two things can't change their speed, that interaction doesn't exist. It has no significance. It changes nothing. So even though it's the most dramatic of interactions, it can't do anything because something will leave in that direction at a, the speed of light and something will leave in that direction at the speed of light and it'll be just like they never hit each other. And I think that's clearly significant in terms of how the universe interacts and uh, I think it explains it will probably explain a lot but it will I think it may lie at the core of the whole quantum thing too um, you know the fact that there's this missing place in the linear line, and that's really what quantum mechanics is a description of, is the lack of symmetry. And I think that lack of symmetry is created by that fact that peak interaction creates no interaction. So anyway, um, it's probably about, you know, there's some other way I want to say this, but, um, yeah, you know, well, you know, I might as well do a little bit of it now, you know, just, just the fun of it. Um, I thought they left a comment, you know, and brought up the field theory thing. And the field theory thing is, you know, it's just like the Einstein thing. All Einstein did, you know, the idea of a convergence being the cause of gravity, okay, that's a consistent force, okay. Um, 
the inverse square law of gravity kind of thing. So this is just a basic um, description of convergence. And it really just depends on what you make the medium. So Einstein saying space is the medium. The um, field theory is saying, well, there's everything, every, there's a location in space, and all these locations have a, um, a significance. Um, in terms of field strength, it would really be representative of how much matter or photons or things are in that space. So if it, the space is filled, it'd get a number. If it's filled heavy, it'd get a higher number, that kind of thing. And what I'm saying is it's even, it's not, the field isn't space. The field is the photons. It's just that some of them are easily seen and some of them are semi-invisible. Um, clearly, gravity shouldn't be called something invisible, right, when we're, when, it has such a significant impact on our lives, but I mean the, the, the physical cause of it is invisible, but we see the effect, and the cause is, as I'm saying, it's, it is a physical force, and it's the same physical force that's compressing atoms. It's just doing it to atoms in a kinetic way, where for us, it's not so much we don't we we don't experience the the kinetic um, we experience the effect of the kinetic and the fact is that there is no there's no conversion you can't convert a photon into something it's always a photon so when two photons hit they can't turn into half a photon there's still two photons they just go in different directions. So it's like the fish analogy. You can't create or destroy them. You can only make them bump into each other. Sorry. Um, okay, so enough of that. Sorry. It's just, it's just uh, really is on my mind again. Uh, yeah, I just get so caught up in that stuff. So anyway, I'm, you know, I'm just, there's yeah, a lot of things I'm working on. I just don't. Time, time. Need more time. I really, I would love to have a year to devote to different things. I'd love to know what is the right thing to do. You know, there's just so many choices and so much uncertainty. Uh, you know, Mike was sort of talking about that. When life is difficult, it's hard to find your way. Uh, hard to find a way to be practical and comfortable, useful and comfortable. Um, it's hard to, hard to, it's hard, <laughs> you know, to find um, contribution, work, quote unquote, um, that you can also have it not only feed society, you know, be useful, but also be um, complementary towards your own development and enjoyment. You know, some jobs are fun and some jobs suck. It just seems like it's really hard to find the, the good job. <laughs> yeah. And, and the definition of that for every person is different. But, uh, you know, what we, you know, I remember when I was a kid having people who'd have jobs and they'd be complaining because there was nothing to do at their job. And I was like, oh, I'd, you know, I'd love to just sit around and get paid for that. Um, anyway, because, you know, you can always just fantasize or something. I mean, shit, you can always do something. <laughs> you know, there's no... Um, uh, you know, I, I wasn't easily bored, I guess is what I'm saying. But anyway, that's a different subject. So I probably this is enough. Um, so yeah, i got to wait for another dumb Anaconovod video. His last video was a shout-out to a Warbles on a lot video, which is kind of hilarious. You know, shout out to a Warbles video, where Warbles was just saying, "Well, oh, people are too angry," and, and that's almost ironic from Anaconovod, right? You know, there's there's two. Um, you know, he is just such a complacentist, you know, and and uh, because he's not living on the street, 
I suppose. Um, he's not working in China at, at some dead-end job where he's at risk of having his arms cut off. So I guess for him there's nothing to complain about. Um, but some of us might say there's a lot to complain about. And uh, the fact that some people go a little wacky seems to me reasonable. There should be some people opening the window and going, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. Um, because it really is appalling. And it's appalling on so many levels. So, I mean, like I said, these, these, these guys, you know, theoretically, who knows? You know, if we go back to 1935 or something and I showed them pictures of the Jews in the concentration camps, you know, maybe they wouldn't think there was reason to get all upset. You know, I mean, it all depends on what end of the stick you're on, right? So, I mean, I could argue that somebody should be mad as hell and almost should be a terrorist of kind of sorts over just animal rights alone. I mean, the fact that you people find it all okay, that you've accepted it, you find acceptance in injustice and unfairness and brutality and torture, <laughs> you know, I don't think that's evidence of good character. I think, I think it's sort of the opposite. But, of course, some asshole is mad as hell because his, you know, wife cheated on him or something. Well, yeah, now that's a whole other story. If somebody's mad as hell because uh, they personally feel cheated, well, that's sort of bullshit. But whatever. I kind of wish people were a little, a little more angry, a little more fed up. The world needs a little of that. But anyway, I mean, it's heading that way anyway. You can just see the wheels starting to fall off a little bit. But it is amazing when you think of, you know, 400 million people in this country, you know. And some nights they can't fill the news with all the wacky shit they do. You know, the, the wackos don't do enough wacky shit for them to have, you know, they start doing stories about cats rescued from trees or something. I mean, they have to go to cats to go find some. The, what, the, what did the wackiest cat do today? Because they can't find a wacky enough person to do a story on. So in some respects, you got to say, that's almost amazing. And, you know, these idiots are saying, there's too much craziness going on. Frankly. <laughs> I mean, I think it's just amazing how little craziness is going on. It, it surprises me. I sit and just wonder how, uh, how is the lid kept on this boiling kettle? So anyway, now, that's probably enough. So anyway, uh, anyway, so anyway again, I said it again. Uh, lots to do, and uh, I better get to it. Still have to do old fans' questions. I can try to do that. Yeah, uh, we'll see. Running out of days. <laughs> Three days, four days left. Yeah, okay. I got to do all my vlogger dome crap. So I got to get that going. Vegetarianism. Yeah. Till next time. Uh, old Dan is running a contest, you know, for the vlogger dome. I mean, I hate that she does, you know, she, she's really just, she does too much stuff. I mean, puts out a little too much. But uh, you can win a $25 gift certificate. If you can produce a little two or three or four minute uh, segment on vegetarianism in video form without stealing music or content. <laughs> yeah, make something semi original. Yeah. Anyway, stuff that's not copyrighted anyway, which is always a tricky line. That's all I got. I mean, I have more, but I just don't care. I'm not going to put that. It's always stuff to complain.